about living, living and enjoying life, live longer. That's my journey. In 78, I was diagnosed HIV positive. Well, I was diagnosed in 1984. At a 20 years old, I believe I was. I was 29 years old when I found that I was sick. Back then, it was a stigma, you know. It was like you was positive, you were no good. It was 1989, and I happened to take the test because I went to the Board of Health just to make sure, you know, I was good. And they said, would you like to take an HIV test? I said, sure. I don't do drugs, I don't, you know, have risky behavior, and it turned out positive. So I had all these dreams and plans that suddenly became meaningless to me. My daughter's father, he infected me, he didn't tell me. I didn't know nothing about being HIV positive. So it's a beautiful film with testimonials of people overcoming, surviving, and encouraging, encouraging from the Peter Kruger Clinic from Mount Sinai. This is when they started to understand the early onset of AIDS, HIV, and the heartbreaking ignorance, stigma, and division that was thankfully and eventually um, fought with science, research, empathy, community, and ultimately humans caring for each other. It's it's films like this that showcase people like Peter Kruger and their family and everyone involved in these efforts that reminds us the much needed love and the positive impact it can make in the world and how much more we need of that. I was immediately sucked in by the sheer honesty and openness of these individuals sharing their journeys and their stories. Um, that all tied into how the center has become this beacon of hope for them in a time where they had nowhere else to turn and when even friends and families turned away from them. Uh, I thought there was such a vast array of stories and perspectives of the impact um, on their lives that this, this disease has brought them, but also the impact brought us straight in excellently into the life of the man who created the center as this beacon of hope and getting to know a little bit more about him getting uh, a face and a life story behind the name which shows where the activism and the the heart of his um mission came from i thought this is absolutely a beautiful piece and uh, really showed the importance of our healthcare systems of true empathy in delivering health care and not giving in to fear monger. It's a wonderful documentary. Um, I think the best part about this um, to me, because I remember as a kid when this was in the news and everybody was proclaiming it to be the end of everything that, you know, if you, if you had AIDS, HIV AIDS, that it was a death sentence and that that was it. Um, and all these impossible numbers were being thrown around and all this. But to see, just at the very start of this, um, people saying, um, hey, I was diagnosed with HIV in 1978, 81, what have you, and they're still here. Um, that's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, that, that, that right there in the very first opening moments of this piece is a wonderful service because there's still people around that think that, that think that about HIV AIDS, that it's an automatic death sentence and they don't know. So, um, but this is a wonderful story overall, you know, of Peter and his family. Uh, and it's so sad that, you know, we lost him and we lost so many of the people around him. But it's so wonderful that, that uh, his family, the way they reacted to, at, to in starting this clinic and, and look at all the lives, you know, I'm, I'm sure this, thousands of lives have been touched, you know, and I'm glad this piece is getting out there to, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to let the world know about this clinic and about all the humans that have been touched by it and the community that has been started um, around it, you know, and the wonderful medical professionals and everybody who who has who have contributed to this culture. So it's a wonderful piece. And, um, you know, it's just everybody on camera is so sincere and so wonderful. Editing was great. The the, the um, you know, cinematography was great. Great use of music, um, you know, it was directed well. It's very well executed and beautiful piece. And I hope it gets out there and gets seen because it's a very important My message. Comprehensive look at how the stigma surrounding HIV and AIDS has changed over time and how the fear that there was at the outset of the epidemic really affected how patients were treated and also how treatment 
and research progressed. Um, I think that the focus on Peter Kruger is important because it shows how something as simple as an act of kindness can save somebody's life and how in medical care that is often missing and the fact that this place was able to provide people with a community um, around which they could rally and help people survive through the sense of community and their generosity and their caring and how that extra piece is really what was able to bring a lot of these people to the point that they're at now and also to make that statement while still recognizing the loss that has been suffered. Um, I think the film did a great job of giving us an accurate view of what it felt like both from the patient's perspective and the medical staff's perspective to work in this place and have made it through this and time. I like the way that it told the story in a very linear fashion. Uh, it's spent a lot of time on the beginning of the AIDS uh, epidemic when a lot of people in the gay community didn't know what it was. They didn't really take it seriously until it hit close to home, which it inevitably did. And actually, the TV series It's a Sin is a great portrayal of that, of what the AIDS crisis was like in the early 80s, uh, as well as showing, you know, politicians sort of using it to single out the gays, talking about stuff like AIDS camps or calling it the gay plague. Um, but then they, then they show the or talk about rather the clinic's namesake, Peter Kruger, and interview his sister. And they talk about how he wanted to sort of destigmatize this disease by shedding light on it. And so his obituary was actually the first one to, uh, to actually mention the word AIDS as the cause of death. And then that showed how, and then they talked about how, you know, the clinic has grown over the years, how they've gone from, you know, losing a lot of people or and misdiagnosing a lot of patients in the early days because there weren't enough trained professionals um, and how, you know, they felt bad for losing people even though it was likely what out of their control. Um, and then even when something like AZT came along, which is a very effective treatment against it they didn't feel the need to push it onto their patients and that helped foster this very caring environment this uh one of them one of the employees i think called it one of the most joyful places i've ever been which you definitely wouldn't associate with an aids clinic um but you definitely that definitely comes across in the interviews of all the subjects uh, i thought the most I thought the most impactful line was from, from one of the patients was that when he said it mattered to them that I was suffering. And they also told the story about how, about the, that one trans patient who requested their name get changed to the female name before they died and how that really affected the, uh, the worker who was by their side that day. Um, you know, I, I thought that, you know, this is, the, I thought this was a very well done documentary touched on everything and didn't feel too long either. Um, you know, and it was a great spotlight on a very specific part of the AIDS crisis because it, it is a very overreaching topic, but it was great that they were able to focus in on this one clinic, which has done, Great work. Really a beautiful piece. And I enjoyed watching it so much. Granted, there were parts of it that were really hard to watch. And it brought tears to my eyes, listening to what a lot of the patients had gone through and what they continue to go through. But the underlying theme of it was the, the hope that the Peter Kruger Clinic had given them. I, I had no idea about the ignorance that there was 
when AIDS first became globally known. I had absolutely no clue. So this was very educational for me. And it was also nice to see everyone candidly talk about their fears and being so vulnerable in this. Um, and also how it emotionally affected them and that they finally had a place in the Peter Kruger Clinic to go to where they felt accepted, where they felt like there was hope. And that is so important in any kind of, any kind of a disease, but especially with AIDS, that you are going to a place where you're feeling accepted and you feel like there's hope. Um, so I really, I really loved this and I, I learned a lot too. Beautiful film, really beautiful. Um, I used to live in New York City and I, I've heard of the P Peter Kruger um, Center and uh, I've had friends that have been treated there and um, it's an incredible place and it's amazing to me that no one's ever done anything like this before so I'm so happy that this film exists it's so beautifully made it's um, so beautifully shot. The vintage footage and the photos um, are staggering. Um, this whole thing is so thought provoking. And it, it, it's so life affirming that there is a group of people in one of the toughest cities in the world, world to live in that care so much. Um, and I, I love that this film exists to highlight that, that these were the first responders of the 80s, of the, the late 70s, early 80s. These were our pandemic responders 40 years ago. So, um, you know, 50 years ago. Um, so yeah, I just, um, I'm so happy this film has been made and it's beautiful. Um, thank you for doing it. Uh, thank you for giving it the respect, um, that it deserves. Um, and, uh, you know, just everything about it, the direction, the editing, the questions that were asked, the way that the storyline was, was arced. Um, it's just a really beautiful film. Congratulations.